Test, 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 test. Testing, testing. Uh, I think that would be an easy way to open yeah. because it's it's a compliment and it's a true one. And they were one of our background for because that'll open them up. I mean, yeah. Once he tells that story, then I want to make sure I want to ask about uh, sponsorships. Super pumped having uh, Brian Cowan in the uh, studio today, man. Uh, somebody who uh, we've watched uh, for a long time, loved the fighter and the kid. Like the, what separates like a great comic from somebody who's like kind of a journeyman and they may never make it anywhere. Like to kind of talk about that, I want to find out more about the bill. And I'd like to talk about how comedy is the, the, the it's the canary in the coal mine. It's the last bastion of free speech. Oh, that's of comedy. Yeah, I think you should tell the history of comedy before he even gets to talk. Tell, do you want to start with comedy first? S start with telling the history of comedy right, right. and the importance of it. I uh, love the work he's doing, love his stand up. Uh, he's been just in, so an inspiration for us building this business. So it was really cool to have him come in the studio first time. And as, uh, and Nate Diaz, uh, Nick, Diaz uh, Nick Diaz's trainer, oh, wow. um, Luke Rockwell, he, he gets in there and bangs with those All guys. Right. Pretty funny though, uh, didn't uh, think that he was going to be that big. He's bigger than he looks. He looks like a small guy next to Brendan Schaub all the time. And then to see him walk in, and you should have seen the look on Sal's face. Sal instantly always sizes up anybody who comes in our studio. Sal was a little bit jealous of my natural physique, I think. He obviously spends a lot of time in the gym, and I think when he saw me, he went like this. He went, huh, like that. His, huh, he, and I was like, what's wrong? And he goes, hey, your body. Like, what I love about fighting is that you can be, you're a black belt in Shotokan karate, cool. You're a black belt in Kung Fu, whatever it is, awesome. Now get into a fucking ring and see how you can defend a double leg, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah so we had Brian Callen uh, in the studio. It was really awesome. Um, you know, he's, he's got a nice, he's got a nice physique. Uh, you could tell he deadlifts and does lunges. You could tell he does a lot of lunges. Backstep lunges especially, because it works the posterior chain, the glutes and the hamstrings. There, there becomes this weird alpha thing. And then I noticed that his back kind of, he's, he walks straight back, but when, you know, when I, when I kind of took the room over and I took the room over, his back kind of bent like this and he was, so he looked like he was huddled against rain or something. Like, like all of a sudden there's this hailstorm, which is Brian Callen. And that's not what I said, that's what I think Adam said under his breath. Brian obviously is a real pro at what he does, which is refreshing uh, because, you know, I, I work with some pretty good guys, but they're not quite there yet. Uh, a little more experience under their belt, I'm pretty sure that they'll be able to, you know, at least get maybe about 60, 70% of the way where Brian is. Um, but, you know, they've made a lot of progress since we first got started. I, I think at the time I was 50 or 51, and I was like, uh, and I was like, I had my own TV show, huge podcast, headlining all over, yeah, making lots of money. And Adam started asking me about um, what I do to be this proportioned. And, uh, and I think I said genetics, which is part of the reason, but also I, I don't do this fancy shit that these guys do. You know, I don't, I don't take a straight razor to my torso, which I'm sure they all do. There's not a hair on their forearms because they want you to see how striated they are. What happened and, you know, what, what that looks like now? Uh, what, you mean Fire the Kid? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Justin, frankly, I think is attracted to me. I said it. I said it out loud. Me and Brian had a little bit of an awkward exchange uh, initially. I went to go shake his hand. He seemed a little taken back uh, by my stature. I'm not saying that he's not a straight man, but he was looking at me in a soft but hungry way. And I, I tried to kind of, uh, you know, reposition my posture, make him feel comfortable, make it more inviting. And I, I noticed that he, and I've seen this before, he was, he was arching his back a little bit more than he should have, I think, to show me what he's working with uh, when it comes to his posterior chain. So I didn't appreciate that very much. Overall though, I thought the podcast was great. This is the formula. You wanna be successful in Hollywood? Okay, I'll, I'm just gonna tell you how I did it. But the beautiful thing about Brian coming in the studio is he really took charge of the whole episode. And so the flow was really good there. The energy was really high. Uh, the guys didn't really have a, a chance to talk a lot. And I think that's really important when you're an interviewer, you need to learn how to just kind of shut up and let somebody talk. and. Brian kind of forced them into that position. I thought they spoke a little too much. 
could have asked me more questions. Um, but I think, uh, I think I'm going to have that sort of bro effect on the podcast. It's about to, you know, and uh, you're welcome. Brandon was, Brandon Shop's a really good businessman and we had this great chemistry and I was just, I would had so much practice. By the time I was 51, yeah, yeah, dude. It took me 25 Overnight fucking success. years. That's, that's not even a success. Uh, it seems like a very nice guy, very smart guy. Very, very smart guy, um, just boring. There is a serious group of conspiracy theorists and they take this shit very seriously. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. I love doing it though, I love debating them. I'm probably gonna be kicked off Vimeo or Patreon <laughs> yeah. soon because you're not allowed to be talking about conspiracy. Being the kind of the pitch man of Mind Pump, um, you know, uh, I appreciate, I can appreciate that Brian kept trying to sell stuff. Uh, Miami, February 4th, 5th, and 6th, <laughs> everybody. Fuck Miami Improv, then I'll be in Nashville. Oh, February 11th, 12th, and 13th, Zanies. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, I took him aside afterwards and gave him some pointers because it was too obvious. Like, it wasn't, you're not selling anything the way you're doing it, Brian. You gotta, there's a, there's a, there's a better way and now I'm going to actually, they're in the gym right now waiting for me to take them through a workout. And I'll probably just uh, do some body weight exercises to show them how <laughs> strong they're not, if you will. Mind Pump Podcast. Not as good as Big and Hungry Podcast, which is coming soon, or Conspiracy Social Club. But listen, these kids are trying. Yeah. All right, we got it. Yeah, we're old school. Yeah, right. Yeah. Old school is yeah. right. Hell yeah. Thank you again, man. Thank you.